Welcome to the Fit Bucks YouTube channel. My name is Joseph Frankie, founder of Fit Bucks. Glad to be here today. Um, you know, the financial services now for 15, 20 years. Um, and Roth IRAs, I see all the time people misutilize them. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Roth IRA tips and tricks that you can take advantage of in your financial life. Now, if you're new to the channel, you don't know what we do. We talk about two sides of financial freedom. One's tangible financial freedom, which is like dollars and cents. The other one is mentally, how do you think about money and getting that proper mindset correct. Today, we're talking about tangible financial freedom, that dollars and cents with the Roth IRA. Uh, before we jump into it, if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell. It helps us grow. Uh, it helps you, uh, you know, get notifications when new episodes come out and new videos come out. Uh, we have tips and all that type of stuff, so make sure that you subscribe. And if you like this video, be sure to share it with your friends. If you have these questions, they do too. Again, it's valuable to them. It's valuable to us. It's a win-win for everyone. So welcome to the channel. Let's dive into it. Tips and tricks for Roth IRAs. First of all, I want you to know what a Roth IRA is. I'll touch on that for like 20, 30 seconds. Basically, it's just a structure. You put your money in and it has some tax advantages. The primary tax advantage is that it grows tax deferred. Um, and then when you take the money out in retirement, you don't have to pay taxes on it. And so that's where most people just leave things at. But that is potentially underutilizing uh, how you can use the Roth, especially if you have like student loans or if you make a lot of money or whatever it may be. So I'm going to go through those tips and tricks. So that was number one. What is the Roth? Number two, okay, that I want to answer this tip is how do I actually invest into a Roth? There's a costly way to do it and there's a cost efficient way to do it. And you have to figure out where are you at in terms of the investment world, okay? Um, so there's four primary ways. First of all, you can do it through what's called an RIA, which is a registered investment advisor. They're gonna charge you a lot of money. And unless you have like $20 million, they're not gonna give you really that good advice. So my recommendation, especially if you're a young professional watching this, is not to go to a investment advisor. Um, there's not really any purpose. You can do a simple, you know, fun and not have to pay them. And that's step number two. So where do you do it, right? Do it yourself, DIY. Now, I would love for everybody to do it themselves. But I also understand based on our polls at Fitbooks that like 70% of young professionals, meaning between the ages of 20 and 35, don't want to be responsible for their, like their investment. They know that they should be doing it. They want it in their financial plan, but they got other things in their life that they rather do. And so if you fall in that bucket, do it yourself isn't for you. I, I'm not one of these people that are like, you should be doing everything yourself, Roth IRA, fire, fire, fire. Like, if you don't want to do it, I understand. Okay. But if you're part of that 30% that wants to do it, fantastic. Like, I encourage everybody to do it. Awesome. But I also understand that you might not want. So that's the first two uh, investment advisor, which is very expensive, and do it yourself. The third one is what's called a robo advisor. Okay, a robo-advisor is where you put the money in, they ask some questions, they put it in this black box and spit out a portfolio for you. Um, they're cheap. That's the good news. They're like really, really cheap. They're like 20 basis points. Basically what that means is like if you have 10 grand invested with them, they charge you $20 a year. So it's very cheap. But in my opinion, it's also not very good because a lot of the robo-advisors, they don't take into account your entire profile. Okay. So what are you to do from there, right? There's got this expensive option, a DIY, this robo advisor thing. Um, we have what, what I created, because I saw these different things called a hybrid robo advisor, okay? Um, we call it hybrid because we mix technology in with a, a person. Now, we're not the only company that does something like that. Ours is unique because of the way we do our portfolios, but the hybrid approach is basically saying, we're gonna take the stuff from a robo-advisor, where it's, it's doing a lot of the heavy work for us, <clears throat> but we're gonna feed it better data, right? And then we're also gonna offer you a financial expert. So if you have questions, you got a human to talk to, not a black box. So that's, that's a hybrid robo-advisor. So if you look at an investment advisor that's really, really cheap, or really expensive, I should say, and then you look at DIY, which is basically no cost, you have this, this spectrum, right? Robo advisors cost here, but not really good. And then you step up to a hybrid, which for example, ours is 50 basis points. Um, so like $10,000 invested, it's $50 a year, okay? So that is the first tip, is understanding 
what situation are you in? Like if you want to manage your own stuff, DIY is definitely the way to go. Um, you know, if you got a ton of money, RIA is the route to go. Um, if not, you just want some help, Robo Advisor is okay. The hybrid approach, let it be with Fitbox or somebody else, that would be the way that I would typically recommend. So that way you get the best of both worlds. You get efficiencies from technology, so it's cheaper, but you get an expert that you can talk to. So that's that's the second tip. All right, so on to the next tip. So a lot of people don't know this about Roth IRAs. Um, earlier I said that people put the money in there, they think about retirement and that's it. What they don't understand is that you can actually take out the money. And the reason why they don't think that is because if you take out the money early before 59 and a half years old, you're penalized. But there's a twist when it comes to Roth IRA accounts, okay? That penalty only applies to gains. So let's just say you put in $5,000 a year um, for 10 years. So you put in $50,000, but the account is worth $150,000 now because it, it grew, okay? That $50,000 you took, put in, you can take out anytime you want to without penalty, okay? And without having to pay taxes on it because you've already paid taxes. That's $50,000 you can take out. So you can use this, for example, as like a buffer for an emergency fund. Is that the optimal thing? No, but you have a buffer there. You have flexibility. You have options with that. But this is also where some other tips and tricks come in, especially if you have some student loans, okay? Let's just say that you're on an income during repayment plan and there's a tax bomb at the end of it, right? So when your loans are forgiven, um, you have to pay a tax on it. So if you have student loans, you don't know about that, I'll put a link in the description for a, a, a video on the tax bomb and all that information. But most people are like, well, how do I save for this? Like, what do I do? Well, you can put that money into a Roth IRA. Let's just say you owe $40,000 um, 20 years from now. Great. You can potentially take it out of your Roth IRA if you need to and leave the rest for retirement. So that, that's a good way of doing that. Okay. So that's one tip that you can use. The other one is saving for a house. Um, again, you can take the contributions out anytime you want to, but there's also another loophole in there. You can actually take out, if it's for a first time home purchase, you could take out $10,000 of gains and not pay the penalty on it. Okay. Now, if the funds have been there for more than five years, then you can take the gain, uh, the gains out, the 10,000 of gains and not pay penalty or taxes. If they haven't been there for five years, then you don't have to pay the penalty, but you do have to pay taxes on it. Okay. So there's some financial planning that you would have to do in there. Now I'm mixed on that, by the way, like, is that a good tip or, you know, bad tip? I'm kind of indifferent. It depends on your situation. Why could it be a bad tip? Okay. I have seen financial planners and just financial experts turn around and say, if you need to take money out of a Roth IRA to buy a house, you probably can't afford the house. Okay. However, I can, I can also counter that like, well, if you're doing this as a financial plan and it was strategically done to benefit you, what's the problem with it? Okay. So that's another tip, you know, using the withdrawal features of the IDR of the Roth IRA for like an emergency fund, IDR tax savings, um, for your future home purchase. Now, another tip has to do with when you can't contribute to a Roth IRA, there's this thing called a backdoor Roth IRA. And so typically when we see this with young professionals is because you're on an income journey repayment plan and you're filing taxes separately from your spouse. So that way you have a lower monthly payment. You can no longer contribute to a Roth IRA. The other time we see it is when your income is too high, you can't contribute directly to a Roth IRA. That's where this thing called a backdoor Roth IRA comes in. Now I will put links to this uh, more detailed video um in the description i'll just touch on it here basically you open up a traditional ira put in an after tax contribution into that once it's there you then convert it to a roth ira so the reason why that's a major tip is because of two reasons first one is a lot of people on like income during payment plans that are filing separately they don't realize that and they keep contributing to a roth ira just directly you're going to get some major fines on that you have to do it correctly so that way you don't get fined okay um, also, a lot of people make mistakes where they do stuff with like pre-tax contributions. Don't do that. Do an after-tax contribution to a traditional IRA. Also, people make mistakes because they make too much income. So they just think, I can't do this. Yes, you can. Okay. So that's a tip on that. Like if you're in those situations, you can still contribute. Again, I'll put a link to that backdoor Roth IRA video in the description. So that way you get more details on that. Now, you, you may see these videos on YouTube where it's like, you're going to have these tips 
for the Roth IRA and I put in $500 and now it's a million dollars, okay? The reason why people could do that is because you can also do what's called a self-directed Roth IRA. That's one of the main benefits of a Roth IRA. You can put it into whatever you want to. You can put it into Bitcoin, you can put it into speculative real estate, you can do whatever you want to. So most of the time when you hear somebody do say that, okay, the tip is probably not listen to them because they probably did a lot of speculation within that. They might have invested in like a startup company and just happened to hit it. Like whatever it may be, they just happened to probably get lucky. Now, if you want to take your investments to that nth degree, awesome. Like if you're doing money management, you're putting the money in there to basically grow for retirement, potentially take it out for, like I said, the emergency fund or IDR or something like that. But if you want to seriously get into investments, then yes, you can do a self-directed IRA and invest into these different things and make a ton of money. I mean, for example, um, like I've invested in my own company, Fitbucks. Part of that investment was actually done through my Roth IRA and my Roth IRA owns shares of the company. So if the company takes off, you know, that whatever it was, 10 grand or whatever I, I put in through my Roth IRA, it could potentially be worth half a million, a million, two million, and then it's all tax free. That that is a massive trick and a massive tax loophole, but it's not for everyone. So before you get like diving down this rabbit hole of, you know, I turned five hundred dollars in my Roth IRA to a million, that's my tip. They are doing something through what's probably a self directed IRA. And if you're a beginner, I wouldn't worry about it. Just keep making those contributions. That's the video today. Like I said, if you like it or if you have questions, make sure you put them down in the comments. I'll be sure to answer them, maybe even do more videos. That's how we come up with ideas. If you like this video, be sure to share it on social media with your friends. It's greatly appreciated by us. They'll appreciate you too. We'll catch you guys in the next video. See you later.